Hey everybody, Chad here. It is time to trim um, some roses, deadhead them, because the flush is over. It has rained several times in the past few days uh, pretty heavily. And as you can see here, we have a few left that are really nice. But then we also have a bunch here who just look nasty. Look at all this nasty. And there's one thing that I like second to uh, a rose bush in bloom, and that is a nice deadheaded rose bush so you can see all the nice green foliage and not all this messy stuff right here so probably I'll I'll think about it but I'm probably gonna take all the flowers off there's only a few clusters left so that way everything blooms back out evenly but I'll show you how we do that if I were going to deadhead this one I don't want to deadhead it right back here I already see a few small blooms coming out of the leaf, but I like to go back a ways because this is so tall. This is a drift rose, so we want to go a little bit lower. Now, drift rose is a little different than, like, say, a knockout um, or a, a bigger type of rose bush, uh, something that does a little bit different type of growth. But drift roses being so um, kind of low to the ground and compact, I'm going to go down quite a bit because I don't really want it this tall. And when you go a little bit lower, it's thicker on the cane, so that helps to have... Um, a little bit more strength to hold it up and also it's going to be a bigger flower maybe not with drift roses too much but with your other roses you don't want them on the very end if you just don't deadhead them which you don't have to or drift or knockouts either they're going to keep having new growth and they're going to keep growing but they're going to get a little bigger a little bigger and the roses probably get a little smaller and a little smaller because they're coming right here on the tips where they're wanting to grow and we want to go way down here so that's what i'm going to do right now is just start slowly trimming this down um and and getting off all these spent blooms so something like this big area right here i'm gonna go way down here because this is gonna come back just as big if not bigger than what it is right now i want to find a leaf somewhere like say right in here and probably right there maybe and cut the whole thing off just like that. I know it's so sad when you cut it when the first time, if you're doing this, you're like, no, I just killed all this. You've got a little bit of new growth, but look how small those are compared to these. This new growth, real skinny um, coming out. Same thing here, not up here. Go down a few leaflets. I'll come down right here to this leaflet and cut right above it, just like that. And it's gonna start growing from right there. Here's new growth right here. Now this one's a little smaller. I'm going to go past that new growth down to here. I said I want this whole thing a little bit smaller there. And you can always go back after you do the first round and kind of uh, straighten it up a little more if you need to. This is easy. It's broke right here, just dangling. So right below that at least. But even in these smaller ones, I want to just cut them back so they don't just get skinnier and skinnier. Everything's gonna grow back. I was actually quite surprised how tall these drift roses got. Um, these are apricot drift, and they just really got a lot taller than the others. Uh, this one here is just so tall, but very flimsy. I wanna cut all this, start it back down here. Hmm, that actually has a nice little smell to it. You can always, if you're cutting off these big ones like this and they're a little bit more fresh, if there's a few fresh ones left, you can always put them in a vase if you trim it up some. Remember, these are drift roses. They're, they don't have to be done, so I'm not taking a long time to really think about too much. Just kind of going back a ways and finding a leaflet and cutting above it. A lot of new growth here and here. That's going to be hard to cut. But it is also going to be too tall. So we're going to go a little lower. Also, if you see anything growing in between other stuff, like there was a cane coming through some of this and rubbing on it pretty good, I just cut that out.
All right, doesn't that look much better? If I missed a few, I'll go clean them up, but nice and neat, look at that foliage. Awesome. Doesn't that look much better than it did? I'll tell you what. And I'll show you something. I cut it a little bit farther back in a few places. Here's why. See right there? One of those basil canes. Um, I think that's what it's called, basil cane. But anyway, this new growth right here is coming down almost from uh, the bottom down there. That's what you really like to see. That new growth, thick cane coming out. It's going to have lots and lots of flowers, branches, blooms on it. So I cut all these smaller ones that were kind of unhealthy and just making very small uh, canes and just twigs that were drooping and small flowers. And then last, look at this. Now I know what some people are going to think on the rose forms. Rose rosette. Nope, that's new growth of a drift rose, a coral drift rose. You can see that bright green right there. It's going all the way down to the ground down there. I said, that's what I'm looking for. When I see something like that shoot out, it's going to be big and thick, and it's going to have lots and lots of blooms. Basically, that's what this is right here. This one from this year, since the spring, has sprouted up. You can see it's a little bit lighter green than all the more mature canes. That one came all the way up. Look at all those blooms. I could not cut these. I'm going to let these bloom and then the rest of it will catch up and then these will be done and I have so many more extra ones it won't even matter so that's one side of the drift roses nice and green things back under control looking awesome now folks these are worse these are sweet drift and they have just fallen completely over from the rain I mean just completely drooped onto everything else so I'm gonna have to trim these up quite a bit take all the flowers off see what is uh, strong enough to stand on its own and if it's not then it's going to have to be trimmed back quite a bit but they just want to lay on top of everything
All right, look at these drift roses now compared to what they were, just falling everywhere. You can actually see the ground a few places. May need to trim up just a little more now that I can see a little better what is going on. So, drift roses here. Drift roses here. And then, drift roses over here. And Molly the Collie. So, drift roses looking much better. Now, the last thing you want to do after you trim some drift roses or whatever roses is what I'm going to do is put rose tone all up around them and fertilize them. So that way they're good to go as they start this new growth and get ready for a few weeks to flower again and have another flush. So rose tone, as much as I can get it under there, it's kind of hard to get it under drift rose. Some of them so low to the ground and they will cut you. But looking good, depending on how much I fast forward to this, I may or may not do a video of me cutting all my other roses. Maybe a whole separate video because these are a little bit different strategy. Especially the ones where, you know, for um, cutting and doing, putting in a vase where it's like this Julie Andrews rose where it's a long stalk and just one big bloom on each stalk. So you want to trim those up just a little bit differently.